The people leading the Vermont Bioenergy Initiative are forging the connection between diversified agriculture and renewable energy production. These farmers, scientists, and entrepreneurs are at the forefront of a local production for local use movement, and they are proving that local food systems and clean energy production together are economical, compatible, and essential. These are their stories. I'm Philip Haltman. I work for UVM Extension in the Bioenergy Project. We're going to talk today about three different crops, sunflowers, canola, and soy, that have been shown to produce oil and feed effectively for farms in this region. And we're going to talk specifically about pest pressures for those three crops and how to deal with those. So today I'm going to focus on methods for controlling pest pressures that deal with mechanical and cultural techniques as opposed to chemical pesticides. In sunflowers, one of the big things we're interested in is which pests have been problematic for growers. The first major one that we've seen is the banded sunflower moth, which is a moth that eats the developing flowers and seeds, and they can eat you know, a good proportion of the, of the crop and as a whole, and sometimes up to 20% or 25% of the crop. Uh, which is which is problematic, for sure, for growers. Um, and then there are some sort of minor insects, ones that people have seen here and there but haven't become big issues, like sunflower midge and the uh, sunflower bud moth and sunflower maggots. Uh, those are all different insects that uh, infect stalks or leaves or the sunflower head but don't cause that much loss of the actual seed crop. And in terms of diseases, a few things have come up. Uh, sclerotinia head rot, or white mold is a problem. So this is the sclerotinia wilt disease, and you can see unlike all the other sunflowers in the area, this one is dying. Um, and the, the main uh, visible symptom, other than the fact that the plant is wilted, is down here. You can see at the base of the plant is brown and dead. And so, and there's actually mold coming off of the side. Um, so you can see that, that that disease basically just girdles the plant and kills it standing in the field. That disease can infect you know 15 or 20 percent of the field too here and there. Um, and then other diseases are minor. Downy mildew is another one that sometimes comes up but most sunflowers are resistant to that at this point. And then the big animal pests can be birds mostly. They'll uh, in the fall when they're migrating they'll eat um, easily 10 or 15 or, or sometimes even 20 percent of the field then too. But that depends on the field itself and on this time of timing of harvest. The insects and the diseases especially, the major tool that people are using is, is just crop rotation, making sure that crops don't stay in the same, the sunflower crops don't stay in the same field year after year after year. Uh, in most places in other parts of the country, they'll actually only do one sunflower crop every four years in the same field. And that manages to keep diseases, disease pressure low, manages to you know, keep the birds guessing about where the sunflowers will be, which helps. And also the insects, they don't, they're not as mobile as birds are, and so they'll, if, they're, if the same crop isn't there year after year, the adults don't have anything to feed on. So it breaks the life cycles of diseases and insects and keeps birds moving around. In terms of soybean pests, there's a few, again, a few insect pests that are problematic and a few diseases. The insect pests that can be the most problematic in soy are soybean aphid and Japanese beetle, both of which cause problems with, uh, with leaves. So Japanese beetle, uh, like this one, will just eat the, eat the leaf tissue away and in, in, if there's a lot of them, a lot of the Japanese beetles, they can eat so much of the leaf that the plant can actually produce any, enough energy to produce the seed. Uh, and in soybean aphids, what they'll do is actually just suck the juices out of the leaf without eating the leaf tissue, um, but it does the same thing. It just saps the energy of all, saps the plant of all of its energy um, and it can't produce a good crop. But in soy, the best way to manage the, the, the life cycles of these insects is to, is to move the crop around and rotate where they are. Um, because most of those insects will overwinter in the soil right in the field and so if you move the crop the next year when they come out of the ground they don't they don't have the host crop there so it breaks their life cycle in soy the two big diseases that are problems are a root rot and then also the same white mold that infects uh, sunflowers and canola the, that that one disease infects 400 different varieties of broadleaf plants so um, it's common and the best way to manage those two diseases is rotation just like in sunflowers and in canola
So in canola, the major pests are just flea beetles for insects, but they're really pretty bad. They're a very common insect pest in almost everything that's in the mustard family, whether it's a vegetable or a field crop or anything. And they, are, they eat the leaves, so they're, they're called defoliators. And they'll eat enough of the leaves that, the, again, the plant won't be able to produce a good crop. It takes away all the plant's capacity to make energy for itself. Uh, in terms of diseases, there are two major ones. Again, sclerotinia, which infects the sunflowers and the soy. Uh, white mold is a big issue, and canola as well. But then there's another one called blackleg, which actually looks very similar. It infects the stem, and then the plant will just fall over, and there will be no, no crop at all. So those are the two major diseases, both of which are, are problematic for us in our area. The last big pest is, is birds, uh, similar to other oilseed crops because those oil seeds are such a good nutrition source. In the fall, a lot of birds that are migrating through the area will stop in canola fields. And basically, they'll just perch on the top of the plant and uh, make a little incision in the pod and just eat all the seeds right down. So the field will look pretty normal in the fall, but when you come into harvest, you'll see that there's no, there's no seeds left in any, in any of the pods. The best management techniques for insects and for the fungus is to rotate the crop so that you don't grow canola in the same field more than every three years or so, uh, which will reduce the amount of fungal bodies that can, that can fruit every season, but also breaks out the life cycle of the flea beetles. So we've talked mainly today about using cultural techniques such as rotation and planting date and harvest date to control some of the pest pressures. There are chemical methods such as pesticides and herbicides and fungicides that will also help relieve some of those pressures. And if you have any questions about how to use those, UVM Extension is a great resource, as are any of the agricultural service providers that sell those products. One of the big things that we've learned at UVM Extension so far through these biofuel crop uh, experiments is that because the crops are relatively new, uh, it's important for farmers to, to have a, an active role in helping us learn about how to manage these pests. And so the big, uh, big message for right now is for farmers to get out into the fields uh, and scout the crops and look for these insects and these pests and figure out how to incorporate some of the control methods that we've talked about into their production systems that already are in place.